On this episode, I make the bronze axle boxes, along with turning the axle. I tackle final assembly of the radio axle, and try a faceplate machining setup. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. If you've missed the previous couple of episodes, I'm currently building a radial axle from original drawings. The radial axle allows the rear wheels to turn and rotate as the locomotive goes around corners. And the first job today is the bronze axle boxes. These are machined with a 13 degree angle on either side and the axle hole running straight through. Let's get started over at the horizontal bandsaw where I'm cutting a piece of 25mm diameter bronze round bar. This is what I'm going to use to machine my axle boxes today. Once that's done, I head over to the mill. The first step is to turn this round bar into rectangular stock. For this, I'm going to use my fly cutter. It did a great job the last time I used it, so I thought I'd give it another go. I've measured the diameter of the stock, and I set that in with the tool set on top of the work. And with that said, it's time to make a cut. Once one side's machined, it's time to turn it over and machine the remaining three sides. Once that's done, the part will be the size on four sides. Right, with that done, it's time to cut the stock into two separate axle boxes. I do this with a hacksaw, and I've scribed my 13 degree angle on there so I can minimise waste. Now I need an accurate way to machine my 13 degrees. For that, I'm going to use these angle blocks. So I've picked myself out a 10 degree block and a 3 degree block. Stick those together and you know what we've got. Right, so let's head back to the mill. I use the angle blocks in place of a parallel extending the square end of the part on the angle blocks. Right, with that end machined, I can flip it over and stand it on a standard parallel, using my freshly cut angle to align the other end. Once the angle's cut, it's time to drill a hole. For this I start with a spotting drill, followed by working through a couple of drill sizes. And once the hole's just under size, I use a reamer to finish the hole. This gives a nice smooth bore, right on size. The final step is to machine the face. For this I thought I'd use a face plate on the lathe. So what I've done is set it up with an angle bracket, which I've clamped the part to. The bore's aligned on centre with the lathe, 
so the machining on the face will be as well. Easy as that, with a quick deburr, parts ready to be removed from the lathe. I actually made the angle plate up from some scrap angle I had lying around the workshop, so it's a pretty simple setup. Before we get to assembly, let's whip up the axle. I'm going to turn this out of some free machining steel, and as there's some nice parallel shafts on either end, I thought we'd chuck this up in a collet, making it a little easier than turning between centres. If you missed my video where I made the drive axles, check that out. I used the between centres method for that. Right, so I've got my round bar chucked up, so let's rough it out. First taking it down to its 14mm diameter. Once it's down to size, I give it a quick clean up with some memory cloth, and then we can start working on the end features. I use a bit of cutting oil for the final cut. This helps with the surface finish. Give it a check with a micrometer and it's bang on size. So it's time to turn the final feature on this end. Right, with that end done, it's time to flip the part over. So I grip the part on my machine shaft and repeat the process. With the axle complete, it's time for final assembly. So let's head over to the bench. Starting with the axle, I add the axle boxes, and then we can drop them into the cylindrical bearing blocks we made in the last episode. And that's a good sign, they actually move. I made up some retaining straps, and now you can see it all assembled. It's pretty amazing to see how these parts have all come together from that original 2D drawing. And even more amazing, it actually works. The axle can slide from side to side and the cylindrical bearings rotate refractionally. From here I've just got the spring parts to attach, but we'll get back to that at some point. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please like, subscribe and share.
Catch you next time.